Good morning, my friends. Happy Friday. I hope everyone's had a really good week and that you are ready for some new learning. So like always, we are going to start with our spelling words from last week. So if you remember, last week we learned about the letter G and the two sounds that it says. It says hard G and soft G. The hard G says G, 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 and the soft G said like a J sound, J, 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 J. So our spelling words from last week are the words glue, game, grass, those all have the hard G sound, and then we had giant, germs, and gym. Those all had the soft G sound. So for today, we're going to focus on words that end in ER. So there are some rules depending on whether a word's a noun or a verb, or, but we're just going to focus on the, the two letter sound today um, and not worry about any of those rules for now. Okay, friends? So when you have the words ER together, it says ER. I have noticed when reading with a lot of friends that they would say eh er So they would say f arm eh er And then it's hard to kind of figure out what that word is. But if you know that the word ending says er, you can kind of peel it off and figure out what the root word is before you put the er. So we can almost cover this and say f arm, farm. So we know that that word is farm and then we know the er says er. So we could say farm er, farmer. Same with this one. Bake-er, baker. Fast-er, faster. Bet-er, better. Jump-er, jumper. Din-er, dinner. Light, remember I-G-H says the I sound. Light-er, lighter. Teach. Er, teacher, and tall, er, taller. Okay, friends? So, pretty easy once you figure it out because a lot of these words look really long, but a lot of these kinds of things have different kind of games that we learn to kind of figure out how to read them. So, even the double consonant words, which is a tricky one as well, when you see a word that has two consonants that are the same, you just hear one sound. So we don't say b et t e er. We say b et er, bet er. And if you're able to kind of learn those little tricks, then reading comes really easily. Okay, so that's our hope for grade one and two that we treat you all of those, teach you all of those tricks, so that you're able to become super readers. So our new spelling words for this week are going to be the words under, under. I climb under the table. Under. The next one is the word spider. Spider. Spider-man got bit by a spider. Spider. Let me just erase this so you can see. The next one is the water, is the, not the water, the water is the word, the word water, water. I like to drink a lot of water. So my friends, if you remember to just peel off the ending, the ER, just cover it up and you can figure out the first sound. So und, er, makes reading really easy. The next one, we know that TH says the, so we could figure this out. F -oth -er. Father. Father's Day is coming up soon. The next one is the word never. Never. I never eat candy before bedtime. Never. Sometimes I do. And the last word is the word Flower, flower. I love flowers. Flower. Do 
So my friends, those are your spelling works for this week. As always, I would like you to write them down, read them, read them every day, write with them, stick them on your wall, stick them in your car, wherever it is that you can practice them the most um, is best for you. For my kids spelling words, I stick them on my fridge. So then every time my kids go to open the fridge, they have to read the words to me or they, so they've just, they don't even read them to me anymore. They're just in the habit now of they'll stop, they'll read their words and then they'll get whatever they're looking for in the fridge. So that's kind of a neat trick that Miss Herman's done with her kids. Okay. So those are your words. All right, my friends, your homework was sent out on Wednesday. This is your second to last homework package because summer is almost here, which means school's almost done for the year. But your homework packets were sent out on Wednesday and in your homework packets, I try to keep things kind of similar to what we've been doing just so it's easy for everybody. Okay. I know we're getting really tired. It's the end of the year. We're kind of sick of having to do work. So Miss Herman just kind of kept things um, the way they've been going so that we don't have to learn too many new things. All right. I know your brains must be tired. Okay. So. For my grade one friends, for your reading for this homework packet, you have more of these passages. So remember, when you're, when you're doing these passages, you're reading what it says, and then you're drawing a picture based on what it says. So for this one, it says, I see that the brown bat is in a tree. So you're gonna draw a brown bat in a tree, and then it says, the black bat is in the sky. So a black bat in the sky, brown bat in a tree, the gray bat is eating fruit. So maybe it's a fruit tree. So you could draw maybe a pear tree and you'll have the brown bat in the tree, you'll have a gray bat eating the fruit and then the black bat would be in the sky. Okay, friends? So all you're doing is reading the passage and drawing a picture to go along with what you've read. And you have four of those activities. For my grade two friends, you have more of these. So remember, you're reading the passage and then you're answering the questions along with the passage and drawing a picture. So for example, this one says, the girl sat on her horse. Her horse can run really fast. The girl loves to ride her horse after school. Her horse is brown and tall. So that was your information. Now there's questions to go along with your reading. So the first question says, what does the girl love? And in the first sentence, it told you, the girl sat on her horse. Her horse can run really fast. Sorry, in the third sentence. The girl loves to ride her horse. So you would say, she loves to ride her horse. And that would be an answer. The next one says, how does the horse look? So the last sentence said, her horse is brown and tall. So you're not just gonna write brown and tall because that wouldn't be a perfect, uh, complete sentence. You're going to write, the horse is brown and tall. Because if you just wrote brown and tall, we wouldn't know what is brown and tall. Is the girl? Is it the girl? Is it the horse? Is it the house? Is it the pickle? You gotta explain what it is that you're, talk, you're writing about, okay? And then it says, draw a picture using details from the story. So we know that the story is about a girl and a horse. So you'd probably draw a picture of a girl and her horse, right? You're not gonna draw a picture of the moon with a dinosaur on it because that didn't have anything to do with our story. Okay, so remember friends, this is checking your comprehension, which means how well do you understand what you're reading, okay? If anybody has any questions on these or if you don't understand how to do these, please send Miss Herman an email or you can even give me a phone call and I will help you through it so that you understand what you're doing. I don't want anybody feeling frustrated because they don't know what to do for their work. Okay, guys? And for our writing, I have two more animals for us to research that will be on Epic. So you're going to read the information stories about them on Epic and then you will do um, your little research projects. So this week, we're gonna focus on koala bears because they are super cute. And we're gonna focus on hippos because they're cute too. Okay, so you can color these pictures, you can add them to your writing, you can do whatever you'd like to with them. And then you're going to go on to Epic, read the stories, and I think there's a couple videos on those animals. 
and then you're going to do your information pages. So remember on this page, you are going to, after you read the stories on, let's say hippos, this says hippopotamus. So after you, you read the stories on hippos and watch the videos on hippos, you are going to tell me what is their diet? What do hippos eat? What does their body look like? What is their habitat like? Do they live in the ocean? Do they live in the desert? Do they live in a rainforest? Where do they live? And then two facts about hippos that you found were really interesting, okay? And then those one, two, three, four, five facts that you put down are going to be what you write about. So you're going to write me five sentences based on this information to go along with the hippopotamus research paper. Okay, my friends, super easy. This isn't meant to be difficult, but it's supposed to be fun as well, right? I love learning about new things so we can learn about the new animals and then you just tell me about it. Okay, friends. And again, if you have a hard time with this, please just give me a call and Ms. Herman can help you learn. Okay, friends, I'm just going to clean up our board and get everything set up for, for math this week. We are learning something new, but my friends, this is the last math thing that we need to learn for the year. We've learned it all. Even though we're not together, we still managed to learn all our math. So good job, friends. So the last thing we need to learn is called balancing equations. And to start off this little lesson, because it's not hard, it just seems like a really big word, I'm gonna read you a little book that's super cute. It is called Balancing Act. This book is by Ellen Stoll Walsh. The mice had a teeter-totter. So this is a teeter-totter. One person sits on this side and one person sits on this side. And depending on, remember we learned about this for weight, depending on whether something is heavier or lighter, it will either be balanced, it'll go down or it'll go up. It was fun to balance one mouse on each end. Ta-da! So the mice were the same weight, so nothing went up or down. It was balanced. So balanced means it's level in the middle. But then a salamander wanted a turn. Hmm. So what happened, my friends? The salamander jumped on one side and it was heavier on one side, so the balance scale went down. Luckily, a friend stepped in to help. Perfect, balanced again. So another salamander one on the other side. So now there are two animals on this side and there are two animals on this side. So it is equal, it's balanced on each side. Uh-oh, a frog. What do you think is going to happen? The frog's going to land, so then there's three on this side and two on this side, so it's going to tip. Whoa! But then, another frog. So if another frog was on the other side, it's going to balance out again. You're right. So there'll be three on this side and three on this side. Ah, balance once more. Oh no, a bird wants to balance. Do you think a bird can fit on that little stick? Whoops, that's not going to work. No, the bird was way too heavy. So the bird meant everything kind of fall off. or maybe it will. Ta-da! So there are one, two, three, four, five, six little animals over here, and there's a big bird over here. So if these all weighed one pound, let's say one, two, three, four, five, six pounds, this bird, it's balanced, so this bird must weigh six pounds. So although there's only one bird and six animals, they weigh the same. So because they weigh the same, it makes it equal. But not for long. Too many balancers. Oh, they broke the stick. Time for everybody to find something else to do. X 
except the mice. Ta-da! So the mice, again, have created a teeter-totter and it is balanced. So, so my, my friends, friend. when we talk about things that are balanced, when we did it in our weight unit, we used the pan scale, if everybody remembers the pan scale. And remember when we put things in, if they were heavier, it went down, and if they were lighter, it went up. So for balancing equations, we want it to be flat in the middle. So we want this little thing right here to be straight in the middle and that means what is on one side is the same weight as what is on the other side. So when we're doing balancing equations with number sentences, it is a number sentence that has the same value on each side. So if we have, for example, one plus five on one side, traditionally we would say equals six. So let me write that down for you so you understand what I'm talking about. The equal sign is really our trick here because equal, this sign right here, just means same. That's all it means. So what's on this side has to be the same as what's on this side. They're equal. They weigh the same. So if we have, let's see, Ms. Herman said six plus one and it equals seven. So six plus one equals seven. So this here has to be equal or the same as this here. So we know that six plus one equals seven, and then we have the number seven, so they are equal. Does that make sense, my friends, hopefully? Let's try another one if it's got a mixed equation. So if we have the equation, let's see, five plus two, five plus two, and let's say it equals, three plus blank. Hmm. Now remember, all this means is it has to be the same on both sides. So we're gonna figure out the answers on both sides and then we'll be able to easily figure out what goes in this box. So we know that five plus two equals seven. So Ms. Herman's gonna write seven up here and circle it. So if that side is equal to seven, what does this side need to be equal to for it to be balanced? Seven, has to be equal to seven. So I'm gonna put a seven up here as well because we know that seven and seven have to be the same. So then we know it has to equal seven and we know we start with three, so how many more do we need to add to three to get to seven? So let's count, let's start with three. Three, four, five, six, seven. How many did we have to add? We added four. So the answer is four. Okay, let's try another one. Let's try um, three plus six equals two plus blank. We gotta figure out that number. So same thing, we wanna put the answer that we need at the top to help us figure out what goes in the box. So we know that three plus six equals nine. So I'm going to put nine up here and put a circle around it. Now, the equations have to be balanced. They have to be the same on both sides. So if this equals nine, then this side has to equal nine. So, we're starting with two, we have to get to nine. So we have to count up until we get to nine. So let's start with two and count up. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. How many fingers did I have to add? Seven, I had to add seven fingers. So we put seven in there. So three plus six is the same as two plus seven because they both equal nine. So it doesn't matter that the numbers are different, the answer just has to be the same. And in this case, both of the answers is nine. Okay, let's try one more. So when you're balancing an equation, 
all you're doing is making sure that the answer on one side of the equal sign is the answer on the other. So our trick is the equal sign. So if something has equal in the middle, it has to be the same. So if Miss Herman puts a marker in the side, it's not balanced right now. What do I need to make it balanced? Let's put a marker in this side. Now, what if I put two markers in this side? Would it be balanced? No, because it has to be the same on either side. Okay, my friends? So let's try one more of these. Let's try, um, what should we do? Let's do four plus four equals, now, I'm going to switch around the boxes because it doesn't matter where the box goes. You're just trying to figure out what that side equals. So I'm going to put the box first. The box could be over here. The box could be over here. It doesn't matter where the box is. So then we'll do four and then we'll do space plus five. So in order to figure out what goes in the box, we need to figure out what does the answer need to be? So we can figure that out by this number. So we can do four plus four. I know that four plus four equals eight. These markers don't show up very well. Four plus four equals eight. So if the answer's eight over here, the answer has to be eight over here because they're balanced, because this means the same. So we'll put an eight over here. Now we need to figure out what goes in the box. So we know the number five is what we have and we have to get up to eight. So let's count up from five. So five, six, seven, eight. And I added three in order to get up to eight. Okay. So to go over your homework, it's pretty much the same as what we've just done here. For my grade one friends, you're going to have homework that looks like this. And on the first page, they've given you the answers up at the top. So right here, three plus two equals five. And they've already told you that this side has to equal five as well. So you're just going to count on to get to five. So it would be one, two, three, four, five. So the answer would be four. Okay, same as what Ms. Herman just did. On this one, they didn't put the answer in the circles. So you're gonna to have to figure out the answer in the circles. So this is five plus two. We know that five plus two equals seven. So we're gonna put seven up there. And if it's seven on this side, it has to be seven on this side. So then you'll count on from three. Three, four, five, six, seven. And the answer would be four. Okay, friends? And then on this one, you can write the answers up at the top above the bananas, but it's the same idea. So for this one, it says four plus three. So we know four plus three equals seven. So put seven at the top and it's equal to, can't read this, five plus what number? So if this is seven, we have to count on from five to get to seven. So five, six, seven. So it would be two, okay? And the last one is the same idea. So one plus six, write the answer up at the top is seven. And then four plus what number equals seven. Okay, friends? So those are for my grade ones. My grade two friends, your homework is very similar. The numbers are just a little bit higher, okay? So for this one, it gives you the number at the top. For this one, you can write the numbers at the top to figure out what the answer is. And there's three numbers on this one. So seven plus seven is 14. And then six plus five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. How many times, how many more do you need to add to get to 14? So 11, 12, 13, 14. So the answer would be three. And then we have one like this, which is the same kind of idea as the previous one. And there's one like this. So it just says, we know 10 plus four equals 14. So then 13 plus what number equals 14? 13 plus one. So remember the answers just have to be on the same, have to be the exact same on the opposite side of the equal sign. And that's it, that's math. So to finish off our lesson, I am going to read Miss Junaby Jones. Let's see if we can finish the book today. All right, where did we leave off? She didn't like sprigs. Remember she cut her hair and then her teacher saw it. And she was really sad. Okay, so chapter nine is called Learning a Lesson. Finally, Mrs. Put My Devil Horn Hat back on my head. Here, she said, 
This will be the only hat you'll need to wear today, I promise. After that, we went back into room nine and Mrs. told a teensy beansy fib. Boys and girls, may I have your attention please? Judy B is starting to get the sniffles and so I'm going to let her wear her hat in class. She looked at that Nene Jim all day, Jim. She's going to wear it all day and no one is going to touch it, she said, not anyone. I jumped out of my seat. Yeah, Jim, you can't even touch it with your baby little pinky finger, right, Mrs. Right, right, right? Right, said Mrs. Not even at recess, right, Mrs. Right? Mrs. sucked in her cheeks. Yes, Junie B, right. And not when I'm getting a drink at the water fountain and not when I'm bending down to tie my shoes and not when I'm walking to the pencil sharpener and not when I'm just plain sitting in my chair and not when I'm working in my workbook and not when I'm practicing my alphabet and not when, okay, 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 we get the picture, said Mrs. I smoothed my dress. All righty then, I said real nice. After that, I sat in my chair and I worked in my workbook and I played at recess and I went to the water fountain and no one touched my hat. After school, Daddy came to room nine to get me. I was surprised to see that guy. Daddy, Daddy, I didn't even know you were going to get me today. And so this day turned out better than I thought. Daddy stared at my hat. All of a sudden, my stomach did not feel good about this situation. He reached out and took it off my head. Then he quick closed his eyes. Lovely, he said. After that, he picked me up and he carried me to the car. I tapped on him. Did you really mean it's lovely or was that just a joke? I asked him kind of nervous. Daddy didn't answer my question and said he buckled, in, buck, buckled me into my seatbelt and he started to drive. We drove and drove for a very long time. Finally, we pulled into a park, parking lot and looked out the window. Daddy, hey daddy, it's the beauty shop. The beauty shop with Maxine, I said. Daddy took me right inside and guess what? Maxine was waiting for me. She did a smile. Hmm, looks like someone gave herself a little trim, she said. I felt shy of her. I didn't turn out even, it didn't turn out even Steven, I said kind of soft. Maxine ruffled my hair. Then she put me in her giant spinny chair and she sprayed my hair with water. After that, she snipped and snipped and snipped. Finally, she put gel on my hair and she blowed me dry. I looked at myself in the big mirror. Hey, what do you know? No more sprigs, I said real delighted. How did you do that, Maxine? How did you do it? Maxine winked at daddy. Years of practice, she said. Daddy leaned close to my face. Years and years and years, he said. After that, he lifted me down from the chair. And he gave Maxine lots more dollars and me and him drove home again. After we got to my house, Daddy came into my room with me. He took my extra scissors off my desk and he put them in his pocket. Sorry, Daddy. Sorry I cut my own hair, I said. He did a sigh. I know you're sorry, Junie B, he said. I just hope you learned a lesson from all of this. I did, Daddy. I did learn a lesson. I mean it. I mean it. I mean it. I mean it. Daddy kissed my head. Because that guy still loves me, that's why. After he left my room, I looked to my hair some more. It was the cutest hair I ever did see. Just then, my whole face lighted up. Hey, I'm the one who got this haircut started, and so maybe I can be a beauty shop guy after all, I said real filled, thrilled. I tapped on my chin. Yeah, only what happens when I grow up and have to practice some more? What will I use to cut with? I looked at my desk very curious, then I tiptoed over there real quiet and I opened my bottom desk drawer. I searched my hands all around that thing, then all of a sudden, I smiled kind of sneaky, because guess what? More extra scissors. That was the end of the book. Do you think she's gonna cut something else? Let's hope not. All right, my friends. That is the end of our lesson for this week. I hope everybody has a fabulous weekend and it's really sunny outside. The rain has stopped, so that's good. And I hope you are all happy and safe and that you're working hard on your homework. Okay, friends, I will talk to you again on Monday for our guest teachers. See you later, guys. Bye.